Welcome to the NikkiOkoyePodcast.com, and thank you very much for subscribing and downloading our most unique and most powerful material till date, The Entrepreneur Advisor by Nikki Okoye. Entrepreneur Advisor is one of our series of exceptional, content-filled, empowering, and exhilarating podcasts designed and produced for the 21st century entrepreneur and business executive wherever they may be on the globe. Dr. Nikki Okwe, our anchor, is a serial entrepreneur, experienced business executive, and a 30-year veteran of building businesses and funding projects. He has also advised heads of states, presidents, and heads of global conglomerates on three different continents of the world, including North America, Europe, and Africa. His efforts at leading a venture from startup conception stage to billion-dollar status in less than 18 months is legendary. The Entrepreneur Advisor podcast series provides our listeners with extensive insight into the latest 21st century strategies for business development, investment capital aggregation, and global market penetration. In addition, Nikki Okoye tackles the most pertinent issues while providing tactical insight as well as strategic solutions for building sustainable enterprises over the long term. Let's sit back and listen to Dr. Okoye. If you wish to engage Dr. Nikki directly, you can follow him at Nikki Okoye on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Again, that's N-I-C-K-Y-O-K-O-Y-E on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Hi, this is Nikki Okoye, and uh, welcome to episode nine of Entrepreneur Advisor. I'm going to be talking today primarily about the challenges of the global economy as far as the coronavirus is concerned particularly concerned because uh, quite a number of things are going on across the world and uh, people are getting agitated, people are getting scared and it's really beginning to disrupt the global marketplace. I mean, today, the stock market fell significantly by 7% in less than an hour and it triggered a halt in trading at the New York Stock Exchange. Now that clearly tells you that there is panic in the air. And this panic is drawn from the consequences and from the challenges of the slowdown in the global economy. Now, how is the global economy affected by a virus? Everybody seems to be scared about contacting the disease. And so, From a medical standpoint, people are looking more of, oh, I don't want to contact the disease. Where are the medical facilities in place in our community? How is the government advising us to separate folks who are suspected of having the virus and putting them in quarantine for 14 days? Some people are putting themselves in quarantines if they believe they have been exposed to infected persons and so on. But... This is just the surface of the problem. The problem is really what is going on beneath the surface. And let me talk about that. Now, the first major challenge that we experienced with the economy, as far as the coronavirus is concerned, was the fall in the oil price. Now, the oil price, as you know, is tied to the energy requirements of the entire world economy. So oil price means that, you know, cars run on petrol, power plants run on diesel or gas. And so there's an entire value chain, you know, which is tying the price of oil to the demand and the use of energy. The price started to fall. Now, why did the price fall? Because the demand for oil started slowing down. Why did the demand for oil start slowing down? One, China. China is responsible for 80% of global oil demand. I mean, China is the manufacturing hub, the manufacturing headquarters of the world. So almost everybody is doing their manufacturing in China. And as a result, there are huge demands for energy in China. And China's manufacturing 
uh, facilities, the hubs, the industrial parks and estates and so on and so forth. That huge demand for energy means there's huge demand, you guessed it, for oil. Now, when China experienced, China was initially the epicenter of the coronavirus. Uh, over 80,000 people infected. It, it has more infected people than anywhere else in the world. Over 2,000 have died. Now, China obviously started separating people, quarantining. Wutang province was quarantined. Uh, people stopped going to the factories and some factories started separating workers. And in any case, what it meant was that people stopped even going out. In fact, there were some Chinese communities that were looking like ghost towns because people stopped going out, people stopped interacting and that had a snowball effect which meant that factories had stopped producing. A lot of factories kind of scaled down production because workers were scared of coming to work and there was a dovetail you know effect uh, and that effect was that there was a slower demand for energy which meant a weaker demand for oil and once the demand for oil started weakening the price of oil started dropping now price of oil dropped significantly over less to went to 40 42 dollars a barrel went down a bit and then you know an x factor got thrown into the equation the OPEC countries, the countries that make up the organization of petroleum exporting countries, had a meeting in Switzerland. And next thing you know, you know, they invited Russia to the meeting. Russia and Saudi Arabia do not agree on production levels. And then Saudi Arabia leaves the OPEC meeting, shoots up production, discounts prices to its major customers, and then it triggers a price war. Oil price now falls below $40, goes all the way down to $30, hovering about $31, $32 today. And we now have a crisis on our hands as far as oil is concerned. Triggered, of course, by the coronavirus. Now, the coronavirus also has triggered a decline in the stock market. This is due mostly to panic. But it also is due to the fact that a lot of the companies in the stock market will not get the expected returns that they have projected to their investors and to their analysts over the last few months as a result of, you know, decreased demand, decreased production and so on and so forth. So stock market got affected today. It collapsed significantly. Uh, Europe stock markets have gone into a bear market and the stock markets are just going, you know, they're falling all over the world. This is as a result of the coronavirus. Now, in addition to this, a lot of countries that are having some serious coronavirus challenges. So you're looking at Italy, China, I mentioned that already, Iran, Korea, Folks have stopped going to work. Companies are now figuring out, oh, why don't we put people on extended sick leave? A lot of medium companies, small and medium companies cannot afford to pay people while they're at home. So again, you are seeing a rehash of depressed demand in goods and services. People are not going out. People are not buying stuff. And so the economies are beginning to shrink. In the UK, for instance, there is panic buying. One of the things that you can't find in the shops in the UK is toilet paper. People are going crazy about buying and stocking up on toilet paper. So every time a shop delivers a carton of toilet paper, it gets sold out. And so people started fighting themselves in some of the um, uh, Sainsbury's and, and the different shops in the, in the United Kingdom, in London, actually. And so that, that's quite interesting. But it also tells you that there is challenges to the global economy that is coming from this coronavirus. And 
it might take I, I think people just need to calm down a lot of the challenges i think is being built by the press the press is has sensationalized control com, coronavirus to the point that every television station you turn on every radio station you switch on every newspaper or magazine you read everybody's talking about the coronavirus so people are panicking people are panicking we need to take a, a step back it is not as deadly a virus as people are making it out to seem the mortality rate for coronavirus is two percent or less two percent that means out of 100 people only two people will die that's the mortality rate the influenza virus kills much more virulently than the coronavirus and nobody is scared about the influenza virus people travel all the time but people are scared of the coronavirus one because the press has hyped it so much and it may be because it doesn't have a vaccine I believe they're going to find a vaccine very soon. They're working on it right now. But as a microbiologist, my first degree was in microbiology. I know that a vaccine will be found because the pathway has been developed and it's not too challenging to figure out exactly uh, if you have the right facilities and the right laboratory conditions, you know, you can surely develop a vaccine for this virus it's just a matter of time so i expect that we will get a vaccine for the coronavirus very soon and all this craziness will be over but the coronavirus has affected the global economy uh, some of the economies that will be adversely affected are those economies that depend almost exclusively on oil so nigeria is at risk uh, nigeria cannot afford a 30 dollar a barrel oil price for too long Let's say it lasts for one or two weeks, certainly not one or two months, because that will challenge Nigeria significantly. And it's a, it's a snowball effect, because if Nigeria has to depend on $30 oil or $25 oil, then we're not going to be able to meet our debt service requirements. We have over $80 billion in debt, and believe they're about to increase that to over $100 billion in debt because they got a new approval from the Nigerian Senate to borrow another $22.7 billion. So the economy of Nigeria is dependent on oil. Oil price is down, economy is gonna suffer. The currency might suffer as well. Another country is Algeria. Algeria also depends almost exclusively on oil. Oil prices are down, while Algeria's economy is gonna suffer. The, um, the United States oil and gas industry won't suffer as much, but the folks in a specific segment of the industry, like the, the, sale, the sale gas folks, the people who do the fracking, the fracking is an expensive process. It requires $40 to $50 oil. If oil goes to $30, then the people who are involved in, in fracking will be at risk their operations will be at risk because they have borrowed heavily to set up all these uh, sophisticated fracking op operations and if they don't get the oil at a certain price then they cannot meet their production expenses and so the whole value chain you know kind of collapses i know that they have introduced some very sophisticated te technologies in fracking to bring down the production price but i i still know it's about 30 dollars so $30 oil or $25 oil will not do well for the frackers in, in the southern part of the United States who are uh, 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 extracting crude oil from a, a fracking process which is subjected to sale gas. And so uh, this is a special uh, appeal to folks around the world. Let's take a step back. Let's understand that this virus we will beat it now one of the most challenging consequences of the coronavirus is what italy is about to do italy is talking about quarantining a quarter of their population and this happens to be the richest part of the italian nation 
the part that produces most of you know let's say the goose that lays the golden egg italy is thinking of quarantining that entire part of the country towards northern italy and now what that means is that there will not be any goods or services or cars or planes going in or coming out from that region for a specific period of time that's unprecedented but that is exactly what the italian government is about to do they haven't made the final decision but i they've, they've thrown out the kite they've said they're going to do it and uh, we're waiting to hear but the, just to give you an idea of what is going on people are panicking uh, iran it's crazy iran the vice president has caught the coronavirus in the united states the managing director of the port of baltimore has caught the coronavirus so quite significantly very important people are, are getting you know into this corona scare and they're actually catching the virus in washington at a a um, republican rally that president trump attended there was a coronavirus patient at that rally and so some of the folks who actually shook this person's hand have put themselves in self-quarantine we don't know what's going to be the outcome of that but you know things are going crazy but what i'm saying is that let's take a step back let's get a hold of ourselves and let us give those good folks who are working on a solution the time, the money, the support that they need to give us a solution to the coronavirus. I decided to give this special podcast on the coronavirus today so that you know that we are living in a challenging time and a challenging period. My name is Nikki Okoye. You can follow me at, at Nikki Okoye for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And add Nikki's N I C K Y O K O Y E.